Hi all, welcome to Free Life Science class. Today we are going to take a class about RNA's protection assay. So it is a simple technique and this RNA's protection assay is a technique which is used to quantify the abundance of RNA and it has one more advantage that is it is also used to map the position of 5-3-ends of mRNA as well as 5-3-splice site of the DNA okay or in present in RNA sorry it is present in RNA splice sites in RNA okay so what are the steps basic steps involved in this assay technique so first of all we need a plasmid vector so that is the first requirement we need we need a plasmid vector and uh, the second thing is we need phage promoter okay the first thing is we need a plasmid vector and the second thing is we need promoter of phage so t7 promoter or sp6 promoter so a plasmid vector with phage promoter is used to do this rna's protection assay and the gene of interest the dna that is the gene of interest is inserted inside the plasmid vector so i will explain with this picture so here you can see that the first step we have inserted our target DNA into the plasmid vector. So this DNA is inserted here downstream to the promoter in anti-clockwise direction. So this direction is anti-clockwise direction. So in this direction we have inserted our chain of interest in downstream of T7 promoter or you can uh, clone this DNA fragment under sp6 promoter okay so this is the first step that is the transfer of the target DNA inside into the plasmid vector after that we have to digest the DNA using the restriction enzyme okay so the recombinant DNA is digest digested with a restriction enzyme so what happens is that this restriction enzyme leaves a distal end distal end of the gene so that we can transcribe that portion of a gene so we get RNAs so this gene is then transcribed using RNA polymerase of phage so phage RNA polymerase is used to transcribe this DNA into RNA. So after this process we will get RNA and after getting RNA we will degrade this DNA template using DNAs. So the DNAs should be free of RNAs because if we use RNAs here, it will degrade our DNA. So we should degrade this DNA template using any DNAs that is RNAs free DNAs for protecting our synthesized RNA. Okay. After that, we have to hybridize the labeled RNA probe. So in this RNA, one of the RNA is needed for us so we have to detect which rna is that and we are hybridizing a known rna with the probe so that it will make a rna rna hybrid so we will get an rna rna hybrid here okay so in this step we got rna and RNA with probe so RNA RNA hybrid is formed now in the next step we use RNA's enzyme so this RNA's will cleave unhybridized RNA okay 
so it will cleave unhybridized rna that is single stranded rna it cannot cleave double stranded rna this rna is only cleave single stranded rna so due to this rna's action unbound or unhybridized rna will be digested after that we will only have hybridized rnas in our uh, solution and we will put this rna into gel electrophoresis usually we use polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis for this process so we use polyacrylamide gel and we run the gel electrophoresis after that we will get a band like this and we will go for auto radiography so during auto radiography we will get an auto radiogram with a dark band which showing it has radio labeling so we can identify the rna so we can identify or quantify the abundance of rna using this rna's protection assay this is very simple technique and it is easy to study so i think this topic is included in the msc science life science streams so that i hope everyone understand about this topic if you liked my video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you will get new videos when i upload so please subscribe to my channel and also click on the bell icon so that you will get all notifications so until then bye bye